I'm Evan. I'm Reese. I'm John. And we're going to be talking about the critical learning period today, um, specifically language acquisition, whether it be second language acquisition or first language, but um, how that kind of applies to the critical learning period. So our topic, um, critical learning period, that's basically the idea that there is a certain period of time before puberty when learning a language or just certain types of learning in general are easier and really at their peak. And this is usually um, studied in terms of language and the learning or acquisition of a language, um, and more specifically second language, because that most people learn first language when they're children. And um, the change of learning ability from childhood to adulthood can most likely be linked to the way our brains develop in childhood um, and the idea of neuroplasticity, which is the idea that your brain can reorganize itself um, and that kind of slows down after puberty and becomes less possible. Uh, yeah. So, why did we pick uh, language acquisition? Well, originally, we wanted to focus on uh, feral children and kind of the biology and the, what's, what's actually happening with feral children. However, there are a limited amount of cases available with feral children because they, are, they A, occur, uh, they're found in uh, the wild, they're found out in the world, uh, so there's not many experiments done about uh, feral children. Uh, so they're mainly case studies. Uh, so from there, uh, we focused on like a main part of feral children. We shifted to language acquisition, which is um, the ability to pick up a language, to learn a language, and which is something that's uh, difficult with uh, and not really seen very much with uh, feral children. So second language acquisition fits into this as well. So just a quick little blurb of. Uh, Famous people you didn't know were feral children. A, Romulus and Remus. They were the, uh, the founders of Rome. Um, they were abandoned and uh, raised by wolves. And so um, they were feral children, in a sense. And here you see uh, them ra being raised by the wolf. Uh, and Rome is obviously, uh, you see in Romulus. Uh, Tarzan. Tarzan uh, is from the movie. His parents died uh, when he was very young, and he was raised by gorillas. And so when he comes into contact with humans again later on in the movie, there's a big difference because they know he's human, but he can't communicate with them very well other than saying Tarzan. And thirdly, Mowgli. Mowgli is um, from the Jungle Book. Uh, he is raised by the bear Baloo. Uh, and throughout that movie, he is raised by animals. So he is also, by definition, a feral child. So before we talk about um, second language acquisition, we should probably explain first language acquisition a little bit. Um, so Lemberg was really the first scientist to, to hypothesize about language acquisition and the critical period. And he said that um, language learning must occur before um, the onset of puberty in order for language to fully develop. And um, so that kind of suggests the idea of there being a critical period where language learning is at a peak. And some studies that suggest the existence of a critical period, um, one is Jeannie, which is the girl that we talked about in class um, one day who she was kind of left in solitude by her parents. Um, until the age of 13, and she didn't really have any social interactions, so when she, they tried to teach her language when she was three, um, she didn't really progress that far. And then um, another example are studies on being mentally deaf, which um, show that people who learn sign language um, when they were younger tend to have a much better understanding of language in general, especially sign language, than people who learn sign language after puberty. And um, these studies show that there is a linear decline in the ability to learn language um, up until the point of puberty, and it's not just a drop-off. Um, and 
language is not totally unlearnable for late learners. They do um, tend to learn a little bit of language, but there seems to be a point where they just can't progress further, which is what the critical period does. All right, so the hypothesis, hypothesis this experiment was um, trying to just generate that young children were better at learning a second, second language than adults, specifically like when they were in the critical learning period. Um, and to kind of detail this, he thought after puberty, the brain lost its plasticity and organization capabilities. So, you know, during puberty, um, your mind's still kind of growing, your body's still growing, and specifically your brain's growing. So um, it has a chance to adjust more like to new languages, but when you're an adult, your brain isn't growing anymore, it's not molding, it's not shaping the new language. It's kind of just fixed how it is, so it doesn't have that organization capability like it did when you're in puberty. And um, competence at understanding the language reaches um, the peak understanding during the critical period, so before the puberty. So many people would think that um, as time goes on, that you kind of understand stuff better, that's the general idea of the world, but for here, it's the opposite. You understand languages better when you're younger, like before puberty. And um, he thought that the age of three to seven would be the closest to the native speakers. These are the ones that were born here, the ones that spoke the language from the second they were born. Um, they would be the closest to the native speakers. And then the next group, from age to ten, eight to ten, that would be the first group to show a major drop off from the ages three to seven is the native speakers. So in this study, the participants were uh, 46 Chinese or Korean native speakers. Um, so they, the, they uh, the, the speakers, they knew English as a second language already, uh, but kind of details about that were going to be processed um, throughout the experiment. Uh, so these people were uh, ed very educated people, so they're professors, uh, they are uh, research associates, they're graduate students. They uh, they're familiar with academic settings, um, but uh, these languages in particular were chosen because of their large difference uh, in grammar to uh, their native languages of Korean and Chinese. So another critical uh, portion besides uh, their first language was the age of arrival into the United States, their exposure um, to this language. So they uh, tested um, the ability of language learning of the people that arrived earlier in their lives versus the later in their lives. So some procedures. Um, the subjects were tested by, uh, they were shown sentences in, in English and they were tested uh, to see which ones were grammatically correct. And so uh, they were shown a large uh, series of sentences uh, spaced out um, between three to four second intervals. And um, yeah, they had to basically decide, is this grammatically correct to test their knowledge of the English language? Uh, so they, after, after all of this was done, they were interviewed based on uh, their prior knowledge of the language, um, see how well they actually knew the English language before taking these tests. They were um, also tested on their motivation to learn English and be a part of this uh, experiment to see if that had any effect on the results. And when they first learned the language. So the results from the experiment, um, it showed a strong relationship and correlation between the age of acquisition and the performance of the grammar, so how well they did in the uh, grammar test that we just talked about. And the numbers were um, negative 0.77 for those that arrived after puberty, and negative 0.87 for those that arrived before puberty. So you can see that those that arrived before puberty performed a lot better than those that arrived after puberty. Um, and if you were to plot this, there was a linear de decline in performance as the age went on, and then once puberty ended, that performance kind of flattened out, so it didn't continue getting worse as your age went on. Once puberty ended, uh, the results kind of flattened out and stayed the same throughout the years. And um, some of the results worth noting, um, the word order for sentences 
and the present progressive endings, so like the ing endings, were two things that most of the subjects got right, pretty much everyone, no matter what the age was, got right. And there's also some with Jeannie, we'll talk about later. She, that's one of the only two things that she understood. So um, that's something worth noting, just, just that everyone kind of understands those things, no matter how old or what happened to them. Uh, so uh, one thing you may have noticed is in the results is that the age of arrival is the key factor in determining how well a subject will perform in, um, in language-based testing. And um, out of all the variables that were tested, it was really the only one that had a strong correlation. So you can guess that it's a factor for a decline in understanding of language um, for people who are older and above puberty levels than younger people. Um, this suggests strongly um, that there is a critical period because people who were younger and hadn't hit puberty yet showed much better And um, this supports my first hypothesis that language learning must happen before puberty in order for it to fully develop. And this can most likely be explained by the idea of neuroplasticity, and which is basically the way that the brain has the capability to reorganize itself and adapt um, while learning in childhood and before puberty. And uh, that kind of some additional experiments. Um, so there was a study that tested um, the language understanding of people who were deaf and hearing, um, both signers that were deaf and hearing and non-signers that were deaf and hearing. And um, they found that um, those who were deaf and signed there was activity in their brain where the visual cortex is, um, suggesting that they kind of, the language, um, even though it was sign language and not normal language, it affected their brain the same way that normal language would for hearing people. Um, and then there was also a study um, where for cats and monkeys, they sewed the front of their eyelids shut, and um, they found that there was a critical period where their eye was sewn shut from birth to a certain age, then that eye would not become developed. But if their eye was sewn shut after that length of critical period, um, then their eyesight was not affected. And this is seen in humans too with um, cataracts. So the first interesting case is uh, Wild Peter. He was found in England in around the 1720s. Uh, he was found at the age of 12. He survived off of eating uh, sap and just uh, things in nature. Uh, so when he was found, he was presented to King George and then put back into society. And uh, he lived in society for over 60 years, but he was only able to learn two phrases, which were uh, Peter and King George. So that kind of shows that uh, period of critical learning exists. All right, so Jeannie, we kind of talked about her in class, but uh, what happened was she had an abusive father that locked her up in um, like to a toilet for about 13 years, and he didn't allow her to speak. He spoon fed her milk and yogurt, and so she was very malnourished, as you can see, she was really skinny. So after when she was 13 years old, her mom, who was pretty much blind, went and got a social worker, and he discovered the, um, what was happening to Jeannie. So many psychologists and doctors try to work with her. Um, and she started to make some progress, maybe speaking a little bit, gaining some weight. But um, like all, all the doctors and psychologists fought over her, and that quickly made a regress, because you know, she had a long life of abuse. So just this fighting over her made a regress. And right now she's about 60, living in a retirement home. And she still can't really speak. Um, so another experiment that had to do with second language acquisition, um, they kiss tested um, people who were not native, who um, were trying to learn, who had, had experience with English, and they tested late versus early learners, like before, but they played um, English sentences with white noise over them to see if they could 
back to English, and they had similar results to the second language acquisition experiments that we talked about earlier. All right, so in conclusion, um, we found that there is a change in the brain's organizational properties, properties after puberty. So like I said, um, you know, it's expanding during puberty. It's kind of can still shift to the second language. But once puberty ends, that can't happen anymore. So that's why the same second language acquisition is so much worse after puberty. And there um, is, in fact, a critical period that happens before puberty. It's the peak of learning. And the language is best learned early in life. So before puberty ends, then it's a critical period. And uh, some citations. 